Okay, so this is my first video for um, advanced algebra and trig. If you're in my physics class, you know the deal with this. Uh, but the reason why I'm having you guys watch this video is because finding the inverse of a function is something that can be challenging for students. And the more you get to hear this, uh, we'll talk more on Friday, but just to give you a head start, you're going to be much more successful with finding the inverse. Uh, so what is an inverse? An inverse is something that undoes another function. So you guys have learned in algebra that if I have a function y equals x squared, how do I get rid of that x squared? Well, I would take the square root of both sides. And so I get the square root of y equals plus or minus x. Because remember, when we take the square root of x squared, we get plus or minus. Well, if I wanted to just get x by itself, then I get x equals plus or minus square root of y. I can just move that plus or minus to the other side since this is an equals equation. So what we say is that the square root and the square are inverses. So what I mean by that is the square root and the squared are inverse operations. They undo one another. Just like cube root and cube will be inverses. Multiplication and division are inverses. So we're going to have much more complex functions. But if you see here at the bottom where I have x equals plus or minus square root of y, what if I want to write this function as a y function and say this function is the inverse of x squared? Well, all we're going to do is to swap x and y. And you can either do this up front or at the end. Uh, most people will do it up front. Uh, you're welcome to do it at the end. So here, this would be y equals plus or minus the square root of x. So what this means is that y equals plus or minus the square root of x is the inverse of y equals x squared. That makes sense. Square root and squared are the inverses. Well, just to keep these y's separate, these are different y's, we're going to put names to this. So let's say that this one is f of x equals x squared. And there's a fancy notation for inverse. It's actually going to be f, and we're going to see this little negative 1 up above, almost like a uh, power, but it's not a power. It does not mean f to the negative 1. We read this as f inverse of x equals plus or minus square root of x. So f of x is x squared. f inverse is plus or minus square root of x. So if you notice, like I said, we're going to switch to x and y and basically solve for y. So let's get another more complex example. If I have f of x equals, and I'm going to just follow through example 2 in your book on page 153. Uh, that example is y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. So you can either switch x and y right away, or you can switch them at the end. I think it's going to make more sense for you guys to switch them at the beginning. So f of x, you guys know that's another way of saying y. So if you want, you can rewrite this as y first. Now we're going to switch x and y. So take y and x, change their places, and this will be x equals y plus 3 squared minus 5. So all we did was switch x and y. Now we're going to solve for y. So if you notice, y is kind of buried in here with all this other stuff. We want to get rid of all this other stuff and solve for y. So the first thing we need to remove is this minus 5. So to get rid of the minus 5, we're going to add 5 to both sides. We get x plus 5 equals y plus 3 squared. Now to get rid of the squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we get the square root 
of x plus 5 equals y plus 3. Now, don't forget that when you take the square root of a squared, we need a plus or minus. So we need to put a plus or minus on this square root here. So now the last thing is we have to get rid of this plus 3. And so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And we get y equals plus or minus square root of x plus 5 minus 3. Now because it can be ambiguous sometimes as to whether this minus 3 should be inside or outside of the square root, mathematicians usually write it in front. So we're going to write y equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5, and that would be your final answer. Now just to avoid confusion, instead of writing y, we're actually going to rewrite that as f inverse. Remember, f inverse is f in this little negative 1 looking thing. So my final answer would be f inverse equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 5 minus 3. And actually, uh, because I went from full screen to not full screen, I have this not quite right. I'll go back to full screen. So I meant to replace this one. But I would say f inverse of x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. Alright, let's do another one. So, if I have f of x equals 3x cubed minus 7, and I want to find f inverse. Now remember the first step is to swap x and y, and f of x is y. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals 3y cubed minus 7. So the first step, switch x and y. And then the second step, which is really finished until the end, we're going to solve for y. So we want to isolate y. Well, the first thing I need to get rid of is this minus 7, so we need to add 7 to both sides. So we get x plus 7 equals 3 y cubed. Now we need to get rid of this 3 that's multiplied out front. So I need to divide both sides by 3, and remember to divide the entire side by 3. So I get x plus 7 over 3 equals y cubed. Well, now I need to get rid of this cube. Uh, and if you remember, just like squi the inverse of squared is to take the square root, to get rid of cubed, we're going to take the cubed root. And so it looks exactly like a square root, except for it has a little 3 here to indicate that it's the cubed root. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, cubed root. Now, the cool thing about the cubed root is that we don't need a plus or minus. The reason why we don't need a plus or minus is because a negative number cubed is negative, a positive number is cubed, oh, sorry, a positive number cubed is positive. And so it really, we don't get the ambiguous sign that we get from the squared. So we don't need a plus or minus for cubed root. So we get y equals cubed root of x plus 7 over 3. Now to write this a little bit nicer, my final answer will be f inverse of x equals the cubed root of x plus 7 all over 3. We just found the inverse. And notice how the inverse has a cubed root. This is cubed. This was minus. This is plus. Times dividing. Every single operation happening here is opposite here. All right. So if you um, want to look in your book for some extra practice, uh, we'll, we'll do some more on Friday. Uh, but I hope you guys at least get an initial understanding so we come in Friday and understand what to do.